Go why? Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for another live virtual happy hour with the Left Bank. And if you can see, you know, we have a special guest, you know, and we'll be going around uh, introducing everyone. But, you know, again, I'm Sean Arnold. Uh, I'm the chef and owner of Left Bank. And we're, this is our, what is this, fourth week, you know? Uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, getting geared up and ready to, you know, open back up. Uh, you know, we'll be talking about some of the things that we're doing. Uh, in the next couple of weeks and you know we can't wait to get back and see everyone and serve you know great cocktails wine and food and desserts uh, so we're going to go around so everyone can introduce themselves first we're going to go to Brittany hi everyone I miss you so much I can't believe it's been four weeks already I am crazy dying for the summer right now so I decided to make you orange crushes today so tune in for the perfect recipe now we're going to go to Megan. Hi, everybody. We missed you. We love you. We can't wait to see you all again. Um, today we will be playing with Negronis and Boulevardiers. So get your glassware chilled and ready. Now we're going to go to Becca, who's going to be who's our pastry chef and going to have a dessert for us today. Becca. Enjoy. Oh, sorry about that, Becca. No, we accidentally had you muted. I'll go ahead again. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh, man. So I just want to say I'm so happy to be a part of today's happy hour, and I can't wait to meet with you guys. Thank you, Becca. Sorry. All right, and I'm going to start it off, and you know, like always, I'm going to start doing wines. Um, you know, hey, you know, this is live. You know, we're not professionals <laughs> uh, on TV and stuff, and also, uh, you know, you know, we have different things that go around and, and kind of go awry. Um, you know, for the past couple of weeks, uh, you know, we've gone from Spain to Italy uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, we did Pinot Noirs last week. This week, um, you know, we're doing the most popular wine grape. Uh, in the world, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, you know, this is, you know, older. Uh, this is, um, you know, you know, very fruit forward. Uh, both of these, you know, you know, Cabernet in general is fruit forward. Um, has a thicker grape. So depending on how the wine producer chooses, it can have lots of tannin. It can have less tannin. Um, it can be, you know, uh, medium bold. It can be bold. Um, <clears throat> So it just, you know, you know, the, the range can be so dramatic. So um, we're going, we're doing two right now. Um, one is going to come from Washington and one's going to come from California. So the first one we're going to start off with is substance. Uh, this substance Cabernet um, comes from um, Charles Smith, who's probably one of the uh, most renowned winemakers in Washington, um, <clears throat> or at least in the top five. Um, has lots of different wines, you know, lots of different varietals, um, you know, and, you know, you can be pretty sure and all if you're having Charles Smith wine, you're having a really good wine. Um, this one is coming from most of its, even though it's not on the label, you know, you know, you know, as, as we talk about labels all the time, uh, it says Washington state. Uh, so the wines could come anywhere in Washington state, but most of this, uh, knowing Charles Smith, uh, and knowing where most of these wines come from and all. Most of the grapes are probably coming from Columbia Valley. Um, you know, so that's in the north central area of Washington, just east of the uh, Cascade uh, wine, uh, uh, mountain range. OK, so looking at this, you know, it's a typical Cabernet in terms of the dark, rich uh, color. Um, you smell it and it's got some really bold um cherries um dark berries um you can get a little oakiness um you know a little some vanilla some chocolate uh you know and and again you know as when we drink this and all we want to bring air in you know give a little um oxygen to the wine and all so it can you know open up in the mouth And then 
as you as you feel it around in your mouth, you know this has has a little bit of acid, you know, uh, uh, you know, quite a bit for Cabernet. Uh, good good amount of tannins, uh, you know. So you know that 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 would give some uh, semblance that it's uh, you know they they let uh, the the juice and the grapes uh, macerate um, with the grapes or so, and also it, you know the tannins uh, are a little higher. Um, you know, you know, it's not, it's not as bold. It's not, it's not in your face as much, um, as I think the Dow is going to be. Um, but it is, it is very drinkable. Um, it is a good, really, really good wine. Uh, so, and I mean, you can eat, you drink this with, uh, beef, lamb, you know, you know, some porks depending upon the, the sauces. So the next one, uh, we'll go on to Dow, uh, Dow here. This one is coming from California again. Now, this one in the bottom says Paso Robles. So that means all the grapes, or at least 85% of the grapes, have to come from Paso Robles. And that uh, is that area of California is pretty much smack dab right in the middle of San Francisco and Los Angeles. So, uh, you know, it has, you know, arid. It has the coastal winds. Um, you know, I really like you know, out of most of California, you know, Paso Robles has, I think, some of the best uh, wines uh, coming from that region. You know, and again, you know, we want to swirl, get a little air in there. And then when we drink, we want to, and we smell. This one has a lot more, a lot bigger nose. It's, it's a lot fruitier, dark fruits, raisins. And with this, this one, right, right in the beginning, you can taste it. No, it's it's bolder than the uh, substance from uh, uh, Charles Smith. Uh, this one has, I mean, it's like raisins and and and, and uh, you know dark cherry fruit, um, and and it lingers a lot longer. Uh, it doesn't have the tannins that the Charles Smith has. It doesn't have tannins like. Uh, <clears throat> Pinot Noir, I mean, uh, tannins like uh, uh, some uh, Spanish uh, reds have, um, you know, th but this is, this is bold. This will stand up to any steak, any stew, um, and it has a long, long finish. Uh, not as acidic and not has, and doesn't have as many tannins. So I really like this Dow. Um, both of these are uh, on our uh, wine by the glass. So they're a great value, um, you, know, you know, great wines to drink. Okay, so now uh, we are looking to uh, go to Megan, and Megan's going to start doing some Negronis and Boulevardier. Okay, I think we're going to go to, oh, oh, hold on. Later on and all, we're going to start, we're going to go to Brittany. Uh, Brittany, are you okay? Are you ready to go? Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. Sorry, I was waiting for my segment to get the ice, so we're ready to go now. All right, I'm making you the summer favorite orange crushes because one day we will be back at the beach enjoying orange crushes with sand in our toes. So the first thing you're going to need is your pint glass filled with ice, and we're going to use two ounces of your choice of orange vodka. If you don't want it to be as sweet, you can use regular vodka, but I, I recommend the orange. A, um, a mandarin vodka is fine too. You're gonna put in one ounce of orange liqueur, preferably Cointreau. Most people probably have triple sec at the house. And then you're gonna put in three ounces of fresh squeezed orange juice. The fresh squeezed is a must. You can't use orange juice from the fridge. It just won't taste the same. Pour that in there. We're gonna give it a nice good shake. Oops. 
and poured over your pre-chilled frosted glass of crushed ice. And now you could top this with Sprite or soda water um, to for lessen the carbs. I'm going to use a sparkling orange uh, Perrier. Top it off there gives you the, a little bit of carbonation and garnish with an orange wedge. And you have everybody's favorite beach drink, an orange crush. Cheers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Brittany. Awesome, awesome. Uh, that was, uh, love those orange crushes. I know a lot of uh, guests are probably craving those, especially during the, during the uh, well, hopefully springtime will come and, and summertime will come. Uh, uh, right now, it doesn't seem like the weather is, is cooperating very much with that. Um, now, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna uh, do a little demo on uh, Corn uh, tortillas. You know, last week we talked about uh, stews and you know the the blue zone group, uh, blue zone um, in in the world where uh, blue zones are healthier places to uh, live. Uh, they eat healthier. Um, you know, it's ninety percent, hundred percent vegetarian. Um, you know, you know, not you know, and not everyone is vegetarian. You know, they still eat fish. They still eat uh, beef, they still eat, uh, chicken, but it's in, in, you know, less amounts, you know, it's 10%, 15%. Uh, so I wanted to do something to where I know everyone probably has a lot of leftovers in their fridge, um, stuff and all that. What am I going to do with this? You know, I want to try to eat it before it goes bad, but you know, maybe I'm tired of this dish. I'm tired of that dish. I wanted to do something to where, you know, maybe you can take those things, put, you know, you know, you know, have a vessel. You know, we always in the United States we like sandwiches. You know, we love sam you know bread and things like that. Um, you know, so this is something a little different. Um, you know, it's it's not as much carbohydrates. Um, it's you know you know it's gluten free since it's corn. Um, the only thing that's in this is <coughs> uh, uh, masa arena, um, a little bit of salt, uh, a little touch of. Um, uh, baking powder, uh, and then warm water. That's all it is, those four ingredients. Um, so what I did was I already mixed this um, a little while ago, you know, so it forms a, a nice nice ball. You know, it's it's not as, you know, you know it's not gonna be the same dough as, as you know, you know, you know fl uh, wheat flour or things like that because of the gluten, They're, you know, this is gluten free. So it's gonna be a little different than that, okay? So, with this, with the recipe that we gave, it makes this size amount, which depending on what size you want, it'll make 12. This in this 12 will make nice small, probably about four inch, maybe four and a half inch diameter little tortillas, or it would do more of a six or almost eight and, you know, not everything's perfect and all. Some of them don't come out always, you know, the same, you know, but, you know, this is slightly bigger depending upon what size you want. You know, I like, I actually like the smaller size. So. So, you know, you just mix it up a little more, you know, just knead it a little bit. This doesn't, you know, this isn't pasta. This isn't anything that needs gluten, uh, you know, so, so you don't need to work it that much. And then all you do. You just take off a little piece and you just section them out into small sections. So what you do then is once you get them to your small sections, you get them to roll them into little balls. And you want them a little roughly the same size. So you can add a little more to this. So Roughly the size of golf balls. Golf balls are, are the size you want. I'm just going to turn my pan on so I can cook these, and these they don't take that very long to cook. So you can get one of these. You don't you, you don't need one of these. You could easily you know just do it right on a countertop or something and, and use a plate and push down 
but this is a tortilla press. You know, it, it is a nice fancy little thing. Uh, you can get it at C-Town uh, or, or any other store. I love C-Town in the, in the city. Um, you know, it's a great place. A lot of different ethnic uh, foods you can get there. So what you want to do, you want to put this right in the middle. Oh, before I do that, no. This is just a Ziploc bag. And I just cut the edges and the end off. And this does a wonderful thing. This is a little better than wax paper. Uh, you know, so you put that right in the middle. Just smash it down just a little bit. Put the cover back on top. And make sure that it's in the middle so it's not going to move around. And just, you don't need to push down hard. And then when you take it off, pull the top off and never pull off the tortilla itself. Just pull the plastic off. Okay? Let's do that one more time. Smash that down a little bit. Fold that over. Put that down. And just a little pressure. And then again, pull that piece off. Pull the top piece off. And it comes off nice and easy. And then just to cook these, Not a, a non-stick pan is perfect. Um, you know, uh, you don't need to put any oil, zero oil. Um, uh, you, you know, depending on, and, and you don't want to, you know, walk away from it, put it down and walk away. This is not the dish to do that with. So, you, you know, it, it'll take 30 seconds, 45 seconds on one side, 30, 45 seconds on the other side. And since it's corn, you know, if it's burning, it's going to start smelling like burnt popcorn. Okay. And then depending upon how long you leave it on there. Some of the first ones. You know, some of the first ones will come out, you know, with, you know, less color, you know, but others, you know, on the, on the outside, as the paint heats up, it'll have a little, little, little color on the outside, you know, so these are perfect vessels for, you know, any, any type of leftover. You can put anything in these, um, you know, they, they'll hold up and stand up very well. And there we go. You know, these two. A little less color, but nice and warm. And then again, you know, you can you can add anything to this, these. Um, I'm actually you know, heating up some leftover rice and leftover uh, bean stew uh, that I'm going to put right in the middle. Okay, uh, and you can do anything. You can add. Uh, pork, you can add other vegetables, you can add lettuce and, and sauteed vegetables, onions, uh, peppers, um, you know, you, you can, you can have meat in, you can not have meat in. So, uh, it's, it, it's a, it's a variety that you can do. Um, and you know, so it's, it, it's a way to use up your leftovers in, in, in your uh, kitchen. Okay. Um, now we're going to try some dessert and we're going to go over to Becca who's gonna show us how to make some really lovely brownies. Hi everyone. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make one of my favorite desserts from brownies, but we're gonna do our own spin on it and do a peanut butter cheesecake swirl inside. Now this brownie recipe is very versatile. If you don't wanna do the cheesecake swirl inside, you can just do the brownie recipe as is, but it's totally your call. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees and you want to have a 13 by 9 dish ready to go sprayed off to the side. Before I make my brownie batter, I mix together my peanut butter cheesecake mix. And this is what it looks like right here. 
Basically, you just take your eight ounces of cream cheese. You want it at room temperature. It's gonna break up the lumps a lot easier. You just put it on your mixer. And to that, you're gonna add a half a cup of peanut butter, three quarter cup of sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. Once you start paddling that and get all of your lumps out, you can add in one egg and just mix on low speed once you add the egg because you don't wanna incorporate too much air into the batter. Once that's done, set it to the side, wash your mixer, and get ready to go for your brownie batter. And if you don't have a mixer, you can easily mix these by hand just in a large bowl, it's totally your call. I prefer using a mixer because it's a little bit easier. Um, so for the brownie batter, you're gonna take all of your dry ingredients and put them on your mixer bowl. So for the dry ingredients, this is just two cups of granulated sugar, one and three quarter cup of all purpose flour, three quarter cup of cocoa powder and a teaspoon of salt. And for this, you're gonna use the paddle and just put it on speed one. You don't wanna crank it up too high or else cocoa powder will be everywhere and it can be a little bit messy. While that's going, you're gonna get your eggs ready and your vegetable oil and your extract. For this, we use a cup of vegetable oil, five full eggs and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. Once you get your dry going and you don't see any more lumps present from the sugar, the flour, or the cocoa powder, you can start streaming in your wet ingredients. So we'll add in the eggs one or two at a time, just keeping it on the low speed. Next, we'll go in with our oil. Once again, just stream that in as well. And then lastly, we're gonna take our vanilla extract and add that in. And these are something you don't wanna overmix also. So really we're just looking for the batter to come together. And looks like we're about there. Now, once the batter comes together, we're gonna to take it off the mixer. And this is the time when I add in some mini chocolate chips. You don't have to add in the chocolate chips. If you prefer, you can add in nuts or you can just keep them plain. I think that the chocolate chips add a nice texture to the brownies. And I prefer using minis versus the large chocolate chips. I just think they disperse a little bit easier fit in the brownies and they just have a nice mouthfeel. So just mix those in gently by hand. And once you're all set with that, you're actually gonna reserve a little bit of brownie batter off to the side. And this is what's gonna help you get the nice swirl on top when you're ready for that. So reserve about a cup or so to the side. And then you're gonna take the rest of your brownie batter and you're gonna pour that in to your sprayed 13 by nine pan. And it's a very fudgy, thick, dense recipe. So if your dough seems a little, little bit dense, that's actually totally normal. And then in order to spread these out evenly, I just use a mini offset. If you don't have one of these in your home, a spatula or a spoon will do. Really just use whatever you have in your house. But as a pastry chef, this is a tool that I use often. So now that we have the actual brownie batter spread out. We're gonna take our peanut butter cheesecake mix, again with a rubber spatula, and we're gonna spread that on top of the brownie batter. Then you're gonna take your spatula again and just spread a nice even layer on top of the brownie batter. And like I said, this is a dense brownie batter, so if you feel like you're struggling a little bit to spread out the batter at all, it's totally normal, but I promise it will come together. And you're gonna get that really nice, dense, fudgy brownie. Once we have the cheesecake on top, we're gonna take the reserved brownie batter. I'm just gonna use a scoop and scoop a couple pieces on top. You can use a spoon, spatula, once again, whatever you have at the house, okay? Then I'm gonna take a toothpick. You can use a skewer, you can use another spatula, a fork, a knife, whatever you have on hand. And I'm just gonna start swirling the brownie mix throughout the peanut butter. Just weaving in and out, trying to get as much even consistency as possible throughout and Really, you're just gonna swirl until you get the desired shape that you want. And we're doing this at home. 
doesn't have to be perfect. It takes some practice. And either way, you're going to really enjoy these. They're going to taste awesome. So now we have some swirls here in the brownie mix. Once you're all done swirling it, they're going to go into the oven. Once again, at 350, you're going to bake them for about 40 to 45 minutes. And the way you can tell if they're done is you can use a toothpick or a knife, just press it into the center. And if it comes out clear, it's good to go. If you don't want to use either of those things, you can press your finger down in the center of the brownies. And if the batter bounces back, it's ready to go. If it sinks down and it doesn't come back up, then you need a little bit more time. Once these are done, you're going to want to cut them right away, but you really want to wait at least two hours. And I know that's our first instinct when we pull brownies out of the oven is to just dive right in. But I promise you it's worth the wait. And once you have these set up, they can cut into about 16 pieces or so, depending on how big you cut them. And then once they're done, this is what they should look like. Hopefully you can see them. Have a nice swirl throughout. And I think this is something that you'll really enjoy. Thank you. Becca, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now I'm going to show you kind of some of the finished product that we have right now of uh, from from the tortillas. Uh, so, you know, the tortillas I had, uh, you know, I cooked off. You know, I added just a little bit of uh, some leftover rice that I had, uh, some bean, vegetable, potato, stew. Uh, and, you know, again, from, you know, I mean, I can't say enough about C-Town. Um, you know, I like uh, Valencia, uh, or no, uh, Valentina, Valentina um, uh, hot sauce. Uh, it, I think it's one of the best hot sauces out there. Uh, you can easily get a nice big jar. Um, you know, if that's too much for you, you can get a small jar. Uh, you know, a good old staple hot sauces that I like adding to tacos or, or, or a lot of dishes. Um, are, is uh, Frank's Red Hot, um, you know, using that, uh, you know, you could easily add some cheese to this, you could add some fresh tomatoes, uh, you know, and then you can add egg. And now we are going to go to Megan, who is going to be ready and, you know, for uh, Negroni and Boulevard. Always ready. Hopefully we stay here. Hi, everybody. So we went a little um, kind of like 1920s here with the style because both of your cocktails are from the 1920s-ish. There's some debate on the Negroni whether it's 1919 or 1920. However, close enough, right? So in your directions, I said we were doing the Negroni on the rocks, but I'm going to drink the Negroni and my dad's going to drink the Boulevardier and he likes it on the rocks, so he gets the rocks and I'm gonna be a classy bee and go up. We're gonna to start today with equal proportions of Tanqueray Gin, and we're gonna go for one ounce. That is your strong. We're gonna follow that with your bitter, Campari, one ounce as well. And we're gonna finalize it with your sweet, sweet, Vermouth. This is the Don Rouge. And this is a all liquor cocktail. So we are going to stir it. There's nothing in there that needs to be vastly incorporated with the roughness of shaking per se. A quick note on the history of this cocktail. The uh, Negroni was kind of created by Count Camilo Negroni. He was a count from Florence, Italy. He had spent some time in the U.S. as a cowboy. Hi, Tony. Um, he was uh, playing on the ranges and being a kind of a cowboy. So he actually was a fan of the Americano cocktail, which is your bitter and your sweet topped with soda water, a light, refreshing uh, aperitif. The count, however, having spent time with the uh, cowboys, wanted a stronger cocktail. So he substituted gin in for his soda water. I'm gonna strain that bad boy out. I'm gonna stop there and save the rest for later. I use small martini glasses, that's what's happening there. And with the finalization of your Negroni, we are gonna do something a little extra special. The garnish is the orange peel. 
So we're going to take a little bit of a peel here, like you used to see us do at the left bank, and you might miss seeing us do. And we're going to hope that there's enough oil left in this because it is pre-cut to give us a little tiny little spark. Take all those extra oils out to enjoy. And your Negroni up. All right. One down, one to go. Cheers, dears. Oh, and this one is for Eric and Holly because you were having Negronis yesterday and I see that you're having them today. So hi guys. Happy quarantine, happy hour. Now, moving on. Boulevardier. We are going to substitute gin for a bourbon. And today we will be using Woodford Reserve bourbon. You can never see the, there's always a glare. Ah, we do what we can. I'm gonna flip my jigger so I have no gin flavor left. And again, this can be done in equal parts. However, people who enjoy their whiskey want to taste their whiskey. So we're going a little extra. We're gonna do an ounce, and I believe I said an ounce and a half, which means I need to top her off, uh, bourbon. All that sweet nectar. And then we're gonna finalize that with our strong. We're gonna go in with our bitter and we're gonna do just three quarters of an ounce this time of the bitter Campari. And our sweets being the Dolan Rouge, sweet vermouth. Again, three quarters only. Same technique, we're gonna stir this bad boy up. I'm gonna call my dad if he's watching. It is time for your Boulevardier, sir. Come and get it. You see that nice chill forming on the outside of the glass. Done. Now, I say to use an orange peel as your garnish because that is the traditional way. However, if you don't have orange at home, you can express the peel of grapefruit or lemon over top. It calls for a nice citrus addition, a little citrus flavor. And we are done. If you don't come and get it, I'm gonna drink it, by the way. I am my dad's daughter. But I do have oranges ready, so we are gonna just go in with a nice wheel of an orange. We're gonna place it here on the outside of the glass and press that in a little bit for that garnish and that flavor. All right, that's a Negroni and a Boulevardier. Oh. Boulevardier, Negroni, both from the 1900s, roughly 1919, 1920. What's today? We're in 2020. So happy 100th anniversary, depending on which history you follow, of the Negroni and the Boulevardier. Cheers, dears. You know, I think we have some great cocktails, great food, great dessert. You know, you know, hopefully, you know, some way to use up some of those leftovers if, if people have leftovers in. Um, you know, you know, like we always say every week, you know, we're missing our guests. We're missing, you know, interacting with everyone. We hope everyone's staying safe. Um, you know, I want to just make sure that everyone knows, you know, support anyone who's downtown right now. Uh, um, uh, I've got, a, I've got a mic in my ear and all. Someone's telling me to say some stuff. You know, uh, that'd be my <laughs> wife. Uh, but, but you know, you know, there are people. You know, there are other restaurants downtown that are doing takeout. Um, you know, uh, I know Rockfish is starting today. Um, there is Central Family Market. There's uh, Revival. There's One Hospitality. Uh, there's uh, Roosevelt. Are doing things. We're gonna start doing Chef's Table. Um, uh, takeout starting, I think next Friday, next Friday, next Friday and Saturday. Um, there's a limited amount, you know, so, uh, you know, so order online at leftbankwork.com. Uh, but please support, um, you know, everyone that is out, you know, to, you know, try to do your best, uh, take care of, uh, you know, whoever you support. Um, and you know, you know, we are, um, you know, you're looking to get back and up and at them uh, as soon as we can. Okay. But we want everyone to be safe. We want everyone to be um, uh, safe when they come out. Okay. Uh, so let's just go around, you know, anyone who wants to say goodbye, you know, say bye to some guests or say goodbye to family members, you know, Brittany, we'll start with you. 
Thank you so much for everybody joining us. I love seeing your comments as we're following through. If you ever have any questions about our recipes, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to answer any questions you have on how to make cocktails at home. I miss you all and can't wait to see you. Beck, is there anyone you want to say uh, hi to? Family members, anyone? Yes, I believe my mom is watching. So <laughs> say hi to her and my sister Emily. And I'm sure her husband and my niece and nephew are watching as well. So hi awesome. everyone. And thank you so much for having me today. It was awesome. And I hope I get to be a part of more in the future. And I can't wait to come back to work and see everyone again. Great, great. And Megan, any last words? Um, cheers. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Can't wait to see all of you. And <laughs> see you next Friday. Yeah. Can't wait. Well, thank, thank you guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And you know, join us next uh, next Friday for uh, virtual happy hour. Cheers. Bye. See you then. Thank you guys. <laughs>